So we're going to see a lot of similarities with the pump equation as we look at the fan equation and how to calculate fan power for a given set of operating conditions. So what we might have brushed over last time is that we really have this general form that we can apply where in order to calculate electrical load, we can look at the flow, the pressure, account for any inefficiencies, and then use these power conversions. So we saw the applied form with pump KW where we have water flow in GPM and pressure in feet of head the appropriate efficiencies, and then the power conversion specific to typical water conditions in our hydronic HVAC systems. So there's an applied form for fan KW that we can use, and the pressure and flow in these cases are going to be airflow or CFM, and inches of static or water column for the air side. And then we have some new constants we'll go over and some similar and some new efficiencies we need to apply. So there's going to be a lot of similarities. Let's kind of start with the top, the key operating parameters of flow and static. Well, once again, um, flow is maybe a little more of the straightforward and intuitive of the two, where we understand how cubic feet per minute or airflow is going to go through a system. But just to kind of make that comparison that we did with that perfect column of water and how we'd measure up once we fill one pound of water in that glass one inch by one inch column and how we can measure 2.31 feet and how that serves as the conversion between PSIG and feet of water column. Well, similar story for air, except we're dealing with far, far less magnitude of pressure. So you can do the same exercise at standard air conditions but here, the conversion we have is that one inch of water column at standard air is going to be a, really a, a fraction of a fraction of a PSIG. So a lot less pressure that we're dealing with. And there's a couple different applications of taking these pressure readings and understanding how to plug that into the fan equation. So we can look at a pressure rise and the differential pressure, or DP, across that fan to see how many inches of water column we gain in the system. And that would be a matter of plugging in manometer tubes to take the static pressure, which we would differentiate from velocity pressure, since we're really looking at the pressure not attributed to the, the velocity, so we're not measuring necessarily directly in line with the airflow, but we'd put these static pressure pickups right more or less perpendicular to our airflow. We can look at a pressure drop, so how much air pressure do we lose across an object like a coil or a fitting and that's going to be a lot smaller so we might look at a fraction of an inch say across an air filter and then we can look at things like duct static pressure so at the discharge of the fan or somewhere fairly down so the industry standard is two-thirds down the duct a lot of times there's a static pressure sensor that the fan will automatically control to typically somewhere around an inch and a half of duct static and that's going to be accomplished by taking that manometer pickup, taking the static pressure of that duct, and then having one manometer tube open to atmosphere. So the efficiencies will look fairly familiar. Let's kind of take a look at that idea of a centrifugal fan and what that might look like in a mechanical room. So some of the same dynamic losses at the fan itself some of the leakage and inherent inefficiencies that you need to account for, mechanical losses, electrical losses. There's one extra component that's typically going to be in these fan systems, unless it's an inline or axial fan. There's going to be a, typically a belt. So the motor doesn't directly drive the fan shaft, but they're connected by this belt system. And there's going to be friction losses associated with that. So it can vary. It depends on how tight that belt is on your pulleys. The tighter, the less friction that you're going to have. It depends on the belt type. So if it's a V-belt versus if it's a cog or synchronous belt, those are going to be slightly more efficient. But all in all, you're going to have the same approach where you're trying to count all these inefficiencies, add them up, and then that would be built into your fan equation. So same story again with the conversions for power. We just have a slightly different one for air versus water. So this 6356, that is a way for us to plug in the key operating parameters, CFM and inches of water column, and get horsepower out 
of, of that particular conversion. And what we do is we start with this power conversion from foot-pounds per hour to horsepower. We're going to do a pressure conversion from PSI to inches of water column. We're going to do a conversion from square feet to square inches. And then have this time conversion so that we can deal with CFM or cubic feet per minute. Second constant again, pretty straightforward, which is the 0.746 kW per horsepower so that we can talk in terms of kW. And then the only thing missing to go from a fan power equation to a fan energy equation is this hours, this operating hours. And this can be a little bit trickier with air systems. It's going to be more common to have variable flow in our air systems, and that's going to make it so that it's not necessarily cut and dry how many hours you're operating at a specific CFM. So here's an example of one way that you can group some of those hours in a meaningful way. So let's say that I knew that the f at full load I had 10,000 CFM through this unit, but it was designed to be able to drop down to 4,000 CFM. So if I had something like an automation system, maybe I can try to group what the fan speed is and convert that to CFM and try to have these kind of binned or grouped rows where I know it's operating at X hours near this CFM on average and a slightly different number of hours at this CFM and then add them up to get the total annual hours and take the KWH at each of those rows and sum that together. So in this particular instance, I'm using a constant pressure, which may not be the case. Pressure may be reset depending on the advanced sequences in place. I'm using fairly constant efficiencies, so we're assuming for a VFD the fan efficiency doesn't change as the operating condition goes up and down its system curve. We assume the belt efficiency wouldn't change, nor would the couple points lost on the drive, but we do have a little bit of different efficiency for the motor as it goes from full load. So depending on the size of your motor and how close or how far below, say, 50% of full rated load you're going, you may want to count for, to some efficiency drop in the motor, if anything. But the big story here is that you may need to devise some scheme like this, either with your automation system or with, um, with some weather data. You want to find out what the energy driver is and then get some good defensible numbers for how many hours you're going to run at those different conditions so that you're really getting good numbers out of this fan equation. And with that, we're going to move on to the different variations on these common themes for how airside systems are put together and operate and try to find some meaningful ways to classify the system you're looking at so that we can be a little more strategic about understanding their performance.